We're preening. Sorry. Yeah, we, we look good. We have to look perfect for our adoring fans. <laughs> for our fans. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, welcome to Mark's Library Facebook Live. This is our 12th episode. Is it really? Mm -hmm. I counted them when I put them on YouTube. Wow. Oh, by the did we talk about our YouTube? We channel? mentioned it last time. Oh, we'll mention it again. All of our episodes are on YouTube now. You can find us as Mark's Library Live. Yeah, because we're gonna be YouTube famous. Yeah. We wanna be. So oh. watch it. <laughs> oh, we count on you to make us famous. Right, because so. my mom's views alone are not gonna make no. us famous. I'm not even sure my mom's watching anymore. I, I, yeah, I don't know either. I keep kind of I'm I force my husband to watch it, so he <laughs> watches them. Uh, so Brian, if you're watching, sorry, babe. <laughs> Frank usually chimes in at some point. Yeah, well, so. Frank, yeah, Frank's awesome. He actually watches while we're live. <laughs> uh, Ryan does not. Um, okay. So, so you might notice that we're a little bit loopy right now. There's a reason for that. It is the week before Thanksgiving. Which means? Things are crazy. In the library. Yes. Well, in general, but especially. Right, I mean, our <laughs> lives are all in a, like, total disaster as well. But especially because everything is due. due. The semester is coming to an end. Students are preparing for final exams. Which you guys are excited about, and so are we. Trust yes. us. We're oh, super yeah. excited. That's what we're here for. But. There are lots of things you can do to make this work process a little bit easier <laughs> and to save you guys some heartache y'all yes. as students so I think like um so today we wanted to talk a little bit about well I think what did you call it Stephanie um ways to successfully use the library yes. while not driving librarians crazy yeah so two yeah. parts because I mean you it helps us Give and take. Give, Give and, take. and take. Right? Um, because like Stephanie said, like we're here totally like at this time of the semester to help you guys to make it easier on y'all. That's our goal, right? Um, but at the same time, we are not magicians, magic miracle worker things. I mean, as much as I like to think we are, we cannot make things, we cannot conjure things, right? <laughs> um, so I think, um, Maybe if we talk about some things that we commonly see happening mm -hmm. um, at this point in the semester and kind of, uh, I hate to say mistakes, but maybe oversights that students mm -hmm. make, right? Um, that ultimately avoiding them will benefit you in the long run. Yes. Okay, so where do we want to start? Oh, okay. So I think be considering the recent problems we have had with the um, computers, we should talk a little bit about file management. <laughs> This is an intervention. Yes. Everyone sit down. Let's talk about file management. Okay, so what do you mean by file management? I mean the way that you save, store, and uh, how you hope to retrieve the stuff that you have saved for your classes. So in other words, if you... Sorry, we just got a comment that says, has it started? And we're like, yeah. It is going. Or it's going, right? The, I mean, we've got three people watching. The clock is counting down. Amy, can you see us? <laughs> can you hear us? You since you just joined, hopefully. Everything's Everything's in. working, we think. I'm going to keep talking. Well, see, here's a great example of why you need file, <laughs> file, <laughs> file <laughs> management. Because <laughs> computers are completely and horribly unreliable. And they do all kinds of weird stuff, like, I don't know, shut down. While you're randomly, randomly. Like, just like, okay, Amy can hear us, so we're good. Okay. okay. Thanks, Amy. Preach. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, they're, I feel like sometimes computers at this point, like, they're really just kind of there to, like, throw a kink in your life. Yes. Right? So, like. And they seem to recognize when you have stress. a paper due. Yeah. yeah. Like, your level of stress is here. They're there, they're like, oh. <laughs> I think they do. I think <laughs> printers in particular. Oh, I know. Like printers are like five minutes before five class. Minutes, like, yeah, I got a break. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh look, I'm out of toner. I know. I know. You're over there, like shrinking the toner. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, so I, we like we see this happen a lot, yes. right? And and I think it ends up creating a lot of heartache and panic for students when it happens, right? So recently. Yeah, recently we were having an issue when students would send a paper to print. The, from Word, yeah. From from Word and from one of our computers up here on the reference floor. And uh, it would not send. But these students would have closed the Word program. Or Word would crash, or either Word one. Or Word would crash, and they hadn't saved it anywhere except, or, or nowhere, nowhere at all. They hadn't saved it. So I guess that's... At that point, 
there's nothing it's gone. we can do. You don't right? save it. Um, and maybe this is a good point to say, like at your home sometimes, like on your home computer, Word has an autosave, although it's a garbage autosave. Right. Like it doesn't really actually auto save very well. It was like, what, like every five minutes or Something not like even that. that. I don't even know what it is. Not but very frequently. It's not very frequently. Um, and our computers here in the library do not have an auto save feature because if you imagine there's like 400 people a day on each computer. Each computer, 400. We are seeing millions of people. Millions of people a day. But a whole lot of people use these computers. <laughs> Angela, if you're watching, we're seeing millions of door count. <laughs> millions of people in the door count. No, okay, so maybe like, okay, so 10 people a day, right? So 10 people a day using that computer saving their documents to it would end up like just with, I mean, it would look like my desktop. Yeah, we have piles and piles of papers. Right, so it doesn't have an autosave feature, so it does not do that. So you can't count on that happening because it, it won't happen. And then if it, there, like, it, even if you save it to the desktop and something happens to the computer, they're automatically wiped every time the computer restarts. So it won't be there. So it won't be there. So if you're working and the lights go out or there's a thunderstorm mm -hmm. and you've saved it to the desktop, even if you've saved it to the desktop, it's it could, not there. It's, yeah, it's going to be gone. Right. So and that has happened. Happen oh my God. Yeah. Happens. Happens. Every semester it happens. Um, and I we get it at the, I mean, we get questions about it at the reference desk, panicked, crying students, and we're like, I'm we so sorry, do. there's nothing we can we do. We can't bring it back. Yeah, so we don't want that to happen to y'all. So, we, what should they do? Rec I recommend saving it somewhere else. Yeah. Not on the desktop. And a lot of students like to bring the little flash drives with them. And Do we even have those anymore? Like the little jumpy drives? I yeah. mean, I still came with one today. Yeah. We, we, in fact, we have like a whole bunch of lost and found jump drives. Yeah. <laughs> and People that, are like, it's so, so small, I forget it. So yeah, that's exactly right. So that is, that's an option a lot of students use, um, but one, they break all the time. Or if you're like me and you lose the cap and you get like dirt or coffee or something in the and top then and then it, it won't read it anymore. Or tell you the files are corrupted. Yeah, that happens to me. Or you'll, you'll just lose it altogether. Happens to yeah. me. So, I actually know a guy that lost his dissertation that way. Ah. Uh, what was he? Why didn't he have crack. more than one place? He was place? on crack. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, lost his complete dessert. So it fell out of his book bag, and his entire dissertation was on there. So, so our, our lost and found is full of people. I'm sure our, our <laughs> lost and found is full of dissertations. <laughs> for, for other people's hard work. Yeah. So if you have one, make sure you keep hold of it. <laughs> yes. But I, I think a better way to save your stuff is in the cloud. Yeah. Welcome to the 21st century. Yeah. So we have, I don't even know how to describe the cloud, but the cool, the, it's magic. And the cool thing about the cloud <laughs> is magic. all the students at the university already have an account where you can save things in the cloud through Google Drive. Yeah, and it's unlimited space. And it's free. So you can save like videos, pictures, I mean, like, yeah. presentations. Yeah, things that would normally take up Lots of space. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can't even get a whole PowerPoint on a little jump drive. Yeah. But you can put a whole PowerPoint video. I put up videos in there. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Um, so how would a student go about accessing their Google Drive folder shenanigans? But you do it through your uh, Jagmail account. Yes. So if you're in your Gmail account, you look up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a little grid that has nine, you know, square. Is it nine squares? Nine? Three, 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 three. three you're right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's three, three, three. Three, three times three is nine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you click on that, and one of the options that you will have will be uh, Google Google Drive. So you can go into your drive, and there are lots. And Google Drive is cool too because there are lots of things you can use when you are creating um, projects for your classes. So it's not just about saving, but you can actually use Google Docs to write. Yeah, and that's really awesome because unlike Word's not so great auto save feature, Google Doc saves for you, and it saves. Frequently, every like ten, two every, seconds, every couple of seconds. I mean, yeah. it's super awesome. I mean, you hardly even get a chance to type a whole word. Yeah, and it saves. saves. Yeah, and I mean, so we do a lot of our work in that because it's auto saves, and you can access it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it doesn't get saved to like your desktop, and then you can't, you know, you're on the desk or you're at home or you have a couple minutes between class, and oh, you left your laptop at home. Yeah, so anywhere you have internet, you can access it. And I do that all the time. I'm working on something in my office. I'm working on something out there. I'm working on something at home. And it's all there in the same place and saves it, updates it. Yes. And I mean, I think people think like, oh, it's probably like Word Notepad. I don't even know if you guys remember Notepad. It's a really strong word processing It's very tool. robust. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, practically anything you can do in Word 
you can do in Probably Google Docs. Better. I think it's anything actually- Word can do, I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! All right, sorry guys. Just a bit of a musical interlude. Sorry <laughs> from the non-performer here. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. The only one of the two who doesn't perform, and I'm over here trying to perform. I don't really sing, so. Amazing. <laughs> Killing it today, then. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, anything Word can do, Docs can do docs better. Docs can do better. <laughs> docs yeah. can do anything better than Word. <laughs> I love it. That's going to be the tagline. <laughs> yes, and we just had a comment. It does also have a presentation um, function, which is like PowerPoint. Slides. Yeah, and it's actually better than PowerPoint. I, I think, think it's better than PowerPoint. Well, the nice thing about that is you don't have to worry about like compatibility Oh my God, that is so frustrating. videos or images or things like that. That is so frustrating to put like um, cool, like to choose the font mm-hmm. and then it not, the computer that you're using doesn't have, right. so doesn't frustrating. Have or they're using like 90 or 2000 something and PowerPoint and then you have the newest one. And it's it won't so even gross. open it. Won't even yeah. open it and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to do it today. Yeah. And a, spread, and a spreadsheet function, which is like Excel. Yeah, Google Sheets, which is super nice, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's all sorts of fun stuff. You can do, like, forms and all sorts of things. You, students have access to the calendar, too, right? They do, yeah. So maybe that moves us into our next thing. Time management. Time management strategies. And so we're not going to beat you guys to death with the normal, like, take notes time management strategies. Don't procrastinate. Right. I mean, duh, don't procrastinate. Right. Um, we're going to talk about more specific, more specific strategies. Things. In particular, time strategies when it comes to library research yes. and library resources, right? So like studying that you're on your own to manage your time there, right? But we just kind of want to give you guys some heads up or issues that we see um, when it comes to research mm-hmm. that could have been avoided had t- students considered time the time yeah. issues beforehand, I right? think actually before we move into research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of time management, those kinds of computer and printer issues we were talking about, that's another reason to manage your time well. Because if you Oh right, five minutes before class. Yeah, if you encounter a printer problem or I don't know. Your dissertation drops out of yeah, your backpack. You can't find the file, the file's corrupted, whatever. The internet shuts down. You want to make sure <laughs> the whole internet shuts down. The interwebs is broken. <laughs> What I mean is, you don't currently have access. It, it happened. Yeah. I mean, our internet will go down sometimes on campus. It's rare, but it happens. But it could happen. Yeah. You want to make sure you have time to, to uh, deal with it. To deal with it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a good point. Yeah. But <laughs> since we're the library, more frequently we see time management issues that have to do with research. Yeah. Um, and so I guess I'll just j- jump in. We can, we can turn yeah. it off. Okay. So I see um, a lot when it comes to... Um, seeking resources that our library may not have. So we talked a little bit about last week, Debbie came on, Debbie, our awesome ILL coordinator, came in and talked about ILL. And I just kind of want to reiterate what Debbie said, is that please give some time. Mm -hmm. Time needs to be built into that, right? So don't think, um, oh, it's okay, I'm fine, I'll write my history paper over the Thanksgiving holiday. You need to build some time in for that, right? So if you know... Um, you're in an upper level undergraduate class or in a or in a graduate course. Um, build some time in to seek out resources that we don't have. Mm-hmm. You're good. That's going to take you longer. So start your research earlier. I see a lot of students who take a lot of time to figure out what the heck they're going to write about. So they come in, they have no idea where to even begin yeah. because they have been wheeling away their time, and so they this or this yes this or this. And they are under the impression that whatever they choose, however broad, or will always have something. Will always have something for it, and that is, and very importantly, that it's going to be quick and easy to find. Yes. Oh my God, they'll just like tie something into a box, and voila, it'll be there. There. But even the most experienced researchers, us, need a lot of time to find the kinds of things you're looking for. You don't want to just take the first thing that pops up. Don't satisfy. No. Right. Yeah. I mean, and so like, and I think, like, I mean, like Stephanie, like Stephanie mentioned, I mean, we do this for a living and I would say that 90, 90, nine times out of 10, my first couple searches on a topic are not good. Mm-hmm. They're not good. So it, if I really want to dig in and do research on a topic, I, it's not just like a one and done situation. Right. Um, and a lot of times you have to come back to it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's good research. It's iterative, right? It happens more than once. It's yeah, continuing. and you're going to be changing your idea and 
and finding new things, following new threads, yeah, right? Re refining your thesis statement, you know, realizing that you have gaps that you need to fill in and you can't do all of that in one, an hour before the papers do. Right. Yeah. Or even the night before the papers and do. So that brings me to my next thing, which is part, I guess the part where it's like avoiding driving librarians crazy. We love to work with you guys and our job, I want to reiterate that again, our job is here, we're here to help. Mm -hmm. We're here to help. But it really frustrates us, I think, more, we don't get frustrated with you guys, we get frustrated with what happens. Um, when you guys wait until the night before or two hours before the paper is due and you come in and you want us to help find stuff for you, right? And sometimes at that late date, there's nothing we can do. Either there's nothing on the shelf on your topic uh, or in the databases on your topic, or what I think happens sometimes is a student will know they need to talk to their liaison librarian, which you want, we want you mm -hmm. to do, um, and we may not be in our office. Um, we may be teaching or at a committee meeting or outside the library somewhere, and if we're not here to help you in that hour, what, what, is, what do you do? So you have to be able to plan ahead to work with a library. A library. It's yeah. best practice. I mean, yeah, we understand stuff comes up and, you know, you need to walk in and see a librarian and we totally encourage that if we're here. Um, but you can't count on us being here. We also see a lot of students. So there's a chance that we're, we're seeing another student. Yeah, that we're booked. So yeah. So how would you, Stephanie, what is your preferred method for students to like get in touch with you, set up appointments with you? Through an email. Yeah, it's super easy. Super easy. Like we don't need like I, I even do consultations through email. Yeah, do you? So oh, that's a good point. I think we should say that too. Oh, okay, that yeah. We talk a lot about consultation, like students coming in and like walking in, but that we do email consultations, mm -hmm. and I've also done like Google Hangout and yeah. FaceTime consultations. And phone. I've, I've done consultations on the phone too. Yeah. So we understand you guys are busy. We get it. And um, you might not be on campus, so you know, send us an email, and we can set up some way to help you that works out best for you yeah and the best way to do that is to give us plenty of time to set that up yeah give us a heads up um because what we don't want to do and what we don't like to see is students leaving the library upset and frustrated yes. because their librarian wasn't here to help them um the hour before the paper was due mm -hmm. yeah not good no it isn't it's very upsetting for everyone yeah involved. and this is, i'll just say this it's very upsetting for everyone involved but if that happens to you and your librarian is not in the building please do not yell at the wonderful people at the circulation desk or the no. reference desk <laughs> to help I promise um, so yeah and also I should I should also say too that um, I don't I answer my email a lot but I would say like 9 30 on a, on a Wednesday night I'm probably not checking no. my email um, so expect most of us to be answering during regular business hours eight to five Monday through Friday I mean sometimes we work on the weekends and we'll answer then but um, if you think you know if someone suggests like email your liaison librarian that's great but I will probably return your email the next morning right probably around 9 30 after I've had my second cup of coffee <laughs> you don't want you don't answer. want <laughs> the answered email without my second cup of coffee Okay, so what else do we have on the, like, strategies for using the library? Well, we've talked a lot about file management. Yes. And we talked about using your time wisely. Mm -hmm. and, and scheduling time for a librarian, like, mm -hmm. build that in. And what do you think your average consultation time with a student is? I mean, so a student mm -hmm. needs to build in some time to their schedule. What do you, I, I usually start with, like, 30 minutes. Yeah, that's okay. usually, I usually will block off 30 minutes. Me too. Sometimes it won't take that long. Sometimes it takes longer. Yeah. It really depends on where <laughs> it, it depends on what how much they've done and how clear their ideas are. And does that lead into your That does oh. that leads into my thing. <laughs> so excited. That's is that your like jag paw? Like Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Anyway, put the T Rex hands away. <laughs> so um, that was like, totally like Stephanie said, like how much the student has done mm -hmm. has an impact on that too. And I would say that it's really good practice when working with a librarian. Um, first off, is try to do what you're looking for on your own yes. first. Um, because we want to maximize the amount of time you have with mm -hmm. us, right? So if. Um, it's better if you can come to us with the issues that you're having. So like, here's what I've done and here's where I'm having this right. problem, right? Um, then we can kind of work around that and, and plan. I mean, we also, if we have heads up that you're coming in, I know, and I know Stephanie does mm -hmm. too, um, we will do some pre 
work yeah. on we'll, the topic. We'll look for some things ahead of time. We'll prep a little bit. Yeah, we prep recommend. so that like we're maximizing your time and that we're not kind of fuddling around going like, oh, I've already seen that. I've already looked at that. I've already seen that. I've already looked at that. Here's your problem, right? So you should uh, you should prep a little bit too before yeah. you come in. Yeah, we're prepping. You prep, right? Um, and I think too, it's also a good idea so we can avoid the problem that I had, the issue mm. that I had yesterday. Um, I was when just you, thinking about this. I know. <laughs> when you get in touch with a student, I mean, when you get in touch with a librarian, tell us what your issue is. Yes. Um, I made a mistake yesterday. Uh, I had a student ask, uh, call and set up an appointment with me, and I did not ask um, what issue she was having. I assumed incorrectly what issue that was. Um, and then when she came in, she actually did not need to see a librarian. She needed to see a writing center consultant. Right. Um, so I felt bad because she had essentially kind of wasted, you know, the time and when she could have probably seen a writing consultant, you know, two hours earlier or yeah. whatever. Um, so let us know. Yeah, because there are lots of resources on campus and they're designed to do specific things. And we're here to help you locate information and use information wisely. Not so much with the writing of papers. Right. <laughs> and I, I mean, luckily I was able to kind of get her in mm. touch with a consultant, but it, again, did not maximize her time. Right. Right. So we, we want to do that. So do the work ahead of time. Don't, um, I think that, that's one thing that kind of frustrates librarians sometimes. I think when you show up and you're like, I don't know, I haven't done anything, right. but I want you to, like, make it happen. And yeah. we're like, do it for me. <laughs> yeah. like, okay, I'm going to make you do it in front of me. Fun, right? Actually, I think that is an excellent point. When you come get help from us, we're usually going to be teaching you how to find this oh, that's stuff a good point. on your own. We're not just going to, like, give you a list of stuff and say, all right, you're ready to go. Yeah. Um, and that does frustrate students sometimes. Oh, yeah, so. totally. It totally does. They're like, so you know the collection? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, so just give me a list of titles. And I'm like, mm, not, not, <laughs> no. That's not how that works. I mean, yes, we're going to make sure you leave with something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the goal is to teach you how to recreate that because in the long run, that's going to help you a whole lot more if you can do this on your own. Yeah, because then you won't need a librarian next time. Yeah. Right? And that's the whole goal. What is it? Will we still have a job? Of course. <laughs> it will always be needy. Needy people. Uh, what's the teach a man to fish? Give a man a fish. Or teach a man to fish or whatever. Yeah. We're teaching. We're fishermen over here. We're teaching yeah. men to fish. Fisher. Fish women. Women, <laughs> women fishing. We're teaching people. Fisher people. Fisher people. <laughs> Fisher people. Um, okay, so anything else? Those are the most big ones. Those are the big ones. Those are the things that come in, come come across the most. Yeah. So if you are going into this point in the semester, which I think Ooh, everyone oh we got a good question. Sorry to make a Oh you. no. We love questions. <laughs> yeah, we're very excited. Can faculty members also ask librarians for help? Absolutely, we love oh, working with yes. our faculty. Oh yes, I was just working with faculty Me members. Me this today. Oh, yeah. I so, know. Yes. We, very excited to work with faculty. Yeah, we work with faculty um, for lots of in lots mm -hmm. of ways, right? So um, we work with them on their own projects, their own research. We help them support that, right? Uh, we also help student faculty um, create awesome research assignments for their courses that they're teaching, right? Um, because who would know the collection better than the librarian? Yes, us. No one. Right? So we can, we collaborate with them to make awesome projects. Yeah. And we also, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> and we work with them to figure out what their students are going to need to, yes. to do those projects. Yes. Um, which a lot of times um, faculty coming from other institutions may not be aware of what we have that may be different or uh, more or less mm -hmm. than their, like, uh, other institutions. So we totally help with that. Um, and we also help, we also work with faculty on the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. Right. Yeah. So, um their own research in their disciplines, their student research, and then their scholarship of teaching and learning, which is kind of that weird middle, in the, in the middle, middle yeah. thing. Yeah. But yeah, totally. We totally work with faculty. We love working with faculty. Seriously. Yeah, we <laughs> it's do. super nice sometimes to work, yeah, to be able to kind of talk about big projects. Big ideas. Long <laughs> projects, long-term <laughs> projects. And I also kind of mean, uh, we work with grad students too. Right. So we've been talking mm -hmm. a lot about undergraduates, but... Um, I, I know you work a lot with your graduate students. Um, you have more graduate programs, I think. I, I do, do, yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you're a graduate student, um, and I would suggest if you're a graduate student um, and you are new, so newish, uh, or start just beginning your kind of thesis or whatever you're going to end up doing, um, come just 
set up an appointment yeah, to come, talk with your librarian come about talk to your liaison. What, um, even if you feel like you're doing fine, um, but come talk to us about what your project is. We can, we keep an eye out for stuff, we right? We do. We might have suggestions that you haven't thought of before. And it's a good idea to just kind of have a, a relationship. Like I have a, I have a couple of students that I see regularly. I'm in regular contact with. Yeah. I mean, also, so it's good because we may have suggestions, but also we buy regularly right. too. So we know like, oh, I have somebody working on this this makes sense to buy now that didn't make sense a year ago, whatever. So we can get you the stuff you need. Yes. And remember, we're right down the hall from ILL, so we help with that, yes. too. So yeah, faculty, graduate students, undergrads. Everybody. We love everybody, but please make an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Plan ahead a little bit. Plan ahead. So on that note, we hope you guys have a good, like, rest of the week, the craziness. Mm -hmm. um, if you need assistance, you can call the reference desk at 460-7025 um, and ask to whoever will probably ask you some questions and figure out who you need to talk mm -hmm. to. Um, so yeah, or you can email us, right? Mm -hmm. We have our email address somewhere, I don't know. Everywhere. Everywhere. You could probably also send us a message on Facebook because I know Stephanie's like on top of Facebook. Yeah, I'll so. answer a Facebook message. We can also put the link to the list of liaisons in the. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Look at her killing it with ideas. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do that. So if you don't know who your liaison is. And we'll put that phone number in there since Beth said it crazy fast. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Four, six, zero, seven, zero, two, five. <laughs> Once more. <laughs> no. For those in the back. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, yeah, you guys uh, chill out, uh, be smart, and save your work. Save your work. I feel like I should get a tattoo that says, like, chill out, be smart, save your work. <laughs> like, what do you think? Like a neck tattoo. Just, just chill like, out. Use the cloud. Chill out, <laughs> be smart, save your work. I'm doing I'm it. I'm just going to get a cloud that says, use the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Librarians getting tattoos. Let's do it. Next time you see a neck tattoo, arm tattoo. Read the screen. Oh, read the screen. What? We got a comment that says, read the screen. We don't know what that means. We're reading the screen now. We're reading it. Nope, nothing. I see two little cat emojis. Like oh, that. on a t-shirt. Oh. Okay, so okay, so we're adding. Um, be cool, be smart, save your work, read the screen. That's a big <laughs> neck tattoo. I'm running out of room. I thought we were being instructed to. Read. I knew. I was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> we're reading it. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, uh, next week you'll see tattoos, and um, we will be really. Oh, are we going to do next week? Is this the? It's Tuesday before Thanksgiving. I thought we talked about some of the things we have going on for the week of finals the next week. Perfect. And we're here. We're we're here. We're here. You're here too. I think Tuesday. Yep, yeah. Until five o'clock. All right, guys. So, so that means yeah. <laughs> so that means you better tune in because you're not on Thanksgiving break yet. <laughs> Um, okay, so next week we'll talk about stuff that we have going on for finals, right? Um, yep, some things that we're doing to make this uh, a bit more of a... Less know, horrific? Yeah. Try to make it a, a better experience. Some we things know. that we're doing to make it... Have some places you can... Some good study spaces. Study spaces. Some happy places yeah. for you, right? Some, some preparation opportunities, yeah. Yeah, which is... We know that's it's crunch time, so mm -hmm. we get it. So we'll talk about a little bit, like, our, how our hours will change, kind of what our floors are going to look like, that kind of thing next week. Um, so we'll, we'll be there next yeah. Tuesday at 2. All right. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. You smart. Stay cool. Read the screen. Read the screen. <laughs> Whatever. Save your work.